artificial intelligence. Can it become an apocalyptic nightmare and take over the world? I'm an AI scientist on a long-term mission to promote AI literacy and responsible development. And I'm here today to demystify AI. Let's cut to the chase. How many of you, I want you to just raise your hand, are afraid of AI getting too powerful? Me too. I worry that AI may one day mimic humans so well that telling them apart becomes impossible. We already have deep fakes and digital avatars, media that look so real, although they're made up. AI made this, that's not me. Humanoid robots, they can have actual conversations, show emotions through facial expressions, or even become CEOs. AI can also pass the bar exam and be world champions. Many people picture AI as an all-powerful robot, like the Terminator bent on human destruction. And no wonder. That's the impression you'll get if your only source of learning about AI is from the media. We need AI literacy, which means having a basic understanding of AI, what it is and what it's not. Without it, there is often a disconnect between the reality of AI and people's misconceptions about it. AI literacy is as crucial as learning to read and write. Promoting AI literacy isn't just a topic I discuss. It's a passion that drives me and that's one of the reasons I'm here today on this stage, to talk about a mission I've been on across different platforms for over a decade. It's about time we all got a bit more AI savvy. But first, let me tell you about one of my pet peeves. In fact, I can't help but cringe when I hear it. The term AI. The more accurate term is machine learning, because AI is kind of a vague catch-all phrase. So let's raise the bar and switch to machine learning when it's a better fit. Before, we had to write explicit step-by-step -step instructions for computers. Today, machine learning, particularly deep learning, enables computers to learn from data and define their own rules without being explicitly programmed. Think of AI as a vehicle. First, we start with the fuel, data, that powers the engine. Then we do modeling, which is like designing the engine itself. Next, it's time for test drive to make sure the car performs as expected. And finally, we deploy the model for real-world tasks just like putting the car on the road. But we don't stop there. We keep monitoring the model's performance and make adjustments if needed, just like regular vehicle maintenance. So data is the new fuel, machine learning algorithms are the new engines, and AI is the ride taking us into the future. But before going to the future, let me take you to my PhD days as an AI researcher looking for a needle in a haystack. Well, quite literally, my PhD thesis mission was to develop a machine learning model to detect the surgical needle in ultrasound images of human tissue. It's kind of like a GPS for doctors. Just as a GPS helps you find your way, my tool helps doctors with accurate needle placement in procedures like biopsies. I was working in AI when AI wasn't cool. I had both sides of the world. My desire to make an impact in medicine, probably inspired by my family as medical doctors, and my love for math and the incredible field of AI. I was so excited. 
But little did I know how easily things could go wrong. Let's say we're teaching a computer to spot an adorable chihuahua. She's my best friend's puppy, by the way. Like how we get better at doing something by practicing it over and over, AI learns from a vast amount of tagged images. In this case, chihuahua and not chihuahua. But here's the catch. <laughs> Our machine learning model might get mixed up and think a muffin is the type of a puppy. And if our training data has wrong labels, all that practicing can make this even worse. My initial needle detection model had a similar hiccup. Muscle fat interfaces labeled as the needle by mistake. I spent days and nights tweaking the model, assuming that was the problem, but it was not. The root cause was poorly annotated data. After improving the labeling guidelines for the annotators and several iterations over months, I trained my first successful machine learning model. I vividly remember that very moment. It was a mix of excitement and realization. I'd made a breakthrough. And I also understood the power of AI and its incredible responsibility. I also learned that big data is not really about having a lot of data. It's about having a good quantity of high quality representative data. Because otherwise, as we know, garbage in, garbage out. My PhD also turned into a unique opportunity for me to fulfill my all-time passion, bridging the gap between my work and public understanding. I presented at conferences and meetups. And guess who liked my PhD proposal the most? Medical doctors. They saw AI as a complement to their role, as it could supercharge their treatment accuracy and speed, allowing them to work smarter. Fast forward to today, I'm now a senior machine learning scientist working on Amazon Alexa voice assistants. My journey in AI has brought me to a field that's both exciting and overwhelming. Generative Artificial Intelligence. This isn't just about AI learning and analyzing anymore. This is about AI creating. We are crafting pieces of intelligence that can write stories, make music, or create art. We are at the edge of a new era, an era that could resemble the time from ARPANET and the early stages of the internet and email. AI is now an integral part of our everyday lives, making AI literacy an essential skill. In late 2022, ChatGPT got everyone talking about AI, especially generative AI and large language models, which are based on pre-trained models. Still the same process as we saw, we start with the fuel, data, get massive amount of data from the internet and other sources. Train a model. And then this model could be used to do not just one, but all sorts of different tasks. So while the general public recently got excited about AI, AI is not new. The term artificial intelligence was officially coined in the 1950s, more than 60 years ago. Over the years, we've been trying to make AI more human-like. Chatbots were made to interact with users to learn from them over time. But here's the catch. The Tay chatbot, how it started. Hello, world, Wednesday wisdom. 
and how it ended. Biased, offensive, and hateful. And a more recent similar story, or rather I should say a love story, with the Bing chatbot, which actually insisted on referring to itself as Sydney. Just like these chatbots and my early needle detection work, the output of generative AI, or any type of AI really, depends on the input it gets. Machines won't make decisions on their own. Human creators are responsible. AI models, while incredible, are still mindless chatbots with no moral values or any clues about what they say. Unless we teach them. But how can we teach a computer not to be biased, for example, when as humans, we are still a work in progress? Bias can be embedded in AI on a subconscious level. You know how AI voice assistants like your Siri or Alexa are often given female personas, while male AI assistants are considered better suited for roles that require authority and leadership. Take IBM Watson's role in critical business decisions or Einstein GPT. Or even the latest generative AI model. It had four chances to prove itself and still didn't. While these models are a jack of all trades but a master of none, the output of generative AI or any type of AI really the power of generative AI is still impressive. But with great power comes great responsibility. Misinformation, disinformation, and biases are already huge problems in our society. And with recent advances in generative AI, these are only going to get worse. AI could confidently state fiction as fact, making it challenging for us to tell the difference, and bad actors may use the opportunity to spread disinformation. We're doomed, right? No, we're not. We're going to be OK. The good news is that there are ways to improve these models to teach them the unspoken rules of human values, common sense, and how the world basically works. Again, we start with the fuel, clean it up, remove biases and irrelevant information. Define traffic rules, guidelines, and guardrails to make sure our models behave ethically. Fine tune the model to align it with the guidelines. Add roadside assistance so users could report problems. And finally, keep monitoring the model's performance and improve it with new data and insights. And always, keep promoting AI literacy. To make sure that AI works for everyone, we require everyone. We need to have the tech built by diverse teams with different backgrounds, cultures, and skills. We need regulators, storytellers, or even artists to work with scientists and researchers to examine the data and the models. We need all of you, all of us. AI's learning is the product of its training and environment. Much like how a child learns, just as a child learns to walk and then run, AI learns to process and then predict. But no matter how fast that child runs, they'll still have the instincts and boundaries we've given them. Similarly, AI operates within the limits we define for it, striving to improve, but always staying true to its principles. AI is not artificial intelligence. It's augmented intelligence. 
here to empower us, not replace us. And AI will not replace your job. But your coworker using AI will. If we all prioritize AI safety, I'll be less concerned about AI taking over and more about missed opportunities due to fear and lack of understanding. I believe our mistakes and misconceptions as a society are often driven by fear. So I urge you all to learn about AI and understand the technology that is shaping your lives. Imagine 10 years from now, waking up to an AI-tuned alarm that syncs with your sleep cycle. Your kitchen prepares breakfast tailored to your nutritional needs. Commuting in an AI-powered vehicle that has overcome human limits and can focus on multiple incidents simultaneously, ensuring a smooth and accident-free journey. Combining the AI brain with human reasoning and common sense, we can achieve wonders. AI is a reflection of the humans building it. It's up to us what we make of it.